This is not the one that I need because it's not big enough, but these two sure like it. Three. These three sure like it. I don't know. A front porch doesn't exactly increase the bottom line, y'all. But it is kind of cool. <laughs> and it's blue. You know, a little Commonwealth picker blue. And we can't do green because Lonnie is uh, the man. As historical author Anthony Brandt has said, other things may change us, but we start and end with family. I've been picking the Commonwealth for 20 years, searching high and low at yard, estate sales, antique malls, thrift stores, junk shops, garages, and sometimes even barns for treasures I can pass on to new homes through eBay. But now as I watch my little ones growing up before my eyes, I find that my real treasures are right here with me every day. So join us as we pick, flip, and resell on our two eBay stores and in our two antique booths. Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Picker. My name is Kevin. We've had kind of a busy day and I'm kind of glad that the sales are a little slower than usual. Usually we shoot for 10 sales, maybe maybe even $200 is kind of the dollar amount we shoot for. You know, this is our part-time income and with resellers who sell the kind of things that I do, you know, their ROI is kind of, well, what are you doing, girl? Sophie's with me tonight. So we've had a bit of a uh, of an interesting day. So one of the homeschool hustlers is a little bit under the weather. Turner is he's a little sick. He's got a fever. And so he's upstairs. And so Sophie is here with me. And Bubba, my oldest son, is upstairs kind of looking after Turner, making sure he's okay. And Blue Ridge Mama has taken Reagan to gymnastics. So Sophie feels a little neglected without one of the homeschool hustlers here to play with her. So I enticed her down here today. Nope. Get back on there. You gonna stay there? She usually behaves herself, but if you don't feed her, get back on there. If you don't feed her like every minute, she gets a little rowdy, don't you? So I'm gonna give you your treat, and then if you do it again, I'm gonna have to get you out of here. All right, we'll see. Maybe she'll behave. We had a bit of a busy morning today. I had the day off of school on a, on a, on a weekday, which doesn't happen very often, but had that day off today, so I had to take advantage of it. My wife had painted up some shelving that I had bought really cheaply, and we're going to take them to one of the booths. One of the booths, antique booths, we've kind of been neglecting a little bit. We made a bunch of money out of one, one of the buildings that we're in, and the other antique mall we haven't made as much out of, and really it's because we've neglected paying attention to that one. And so we wanted to be able to put a little bit more merchandise in there, and so we needed some shelving to, to be able to do that. So she painted those up, and me and my oldest son took those in today. And then I went out to finalize the purchase of a building. I, I'm trying not to call it a shed. So, you know, just because I, I like Lon Lonnie so much, and everybody respects Lonnie so much, and I don't want to call it my eBay shed, because there's only one eBay shed, and it's painted green. So I even made sure we didn't get green, so... At any rate, we are going to put one. This is this is my eBay cave. So what we're going to do is maybe, and, and I've had some people chime in maybe what we should call it in the comments. So if you've got another name, I've made a list of all the ones from the previous video that people suggested. And maybe we'll put it out there as a, as a poll or something and let you all uh, help us name that. Now, I will say that I, I my wife thinks I'm nuts, but I listen to cassettes up here all the time. And she says, could you please listen to something that was made, you know, after 1995? And, you know, she's she's a little bit younger than I am. She's, well, I don't, I don't want to tell you how old she is, but she's significantly younger than me. Let's just say that. And she, she doesn't necessarily like the same music I like, which is perfectly fine. But I was listening to Ann Murray, of all people. And right before we came on, thinking about names for that thing, and it's a Lonely Shack by the railroad tracks and I'm thinking the eBay shack so I'm thinking maybe that's what we'll do maybe I think that's some of the other ones somebody said uh, eBay bunker um, you know cave 2.0 I don't know but, but we'll figure that out and that's not terribly important anyways the fact that we're gonna have more space and I could operate out of this cave it's really really small I don't think y'all get the picture I've done a few tours of this little space before and we have 905 current listings and we have 40 listings in the Homeschool Hustler store. And it's, there's not much space in this place. So, you know, I can almost touch wall to wall. Not quite. Maybe if I was a little bigger, I could touch wall to wall. And we're, we're probably less than 20 feet this way. So 
it's a pretty small space. So to have a shed out there that's going to be significantly larger than this, we wouldn't have had to do it except for the fact that we've been doing these antique booths. And I did, I underestimated the space you would need to effectively run an antique booth because you can't just put items in there and let them sit. Just like on eBay, you put items in there and they don't sell, you're going to eventually, your number's going to go up, right? You're going to have, I have 900 items listed. Yeah, but those, there are two to 300 items that have been in there for a year. And so you have to rotate that stock out. And eBay, you don't necessarily rotate it. You do different things to try to sell it. And at a certain point, you even got to pull it. And I would say out of, oh man, how many items do I list a year? I would say I sell close to, you know, 3,000 items a year, a little bit more actually. We're close to 10 items a day. And so with those amount of listings, how many am I pulling every year? Not very many. I think you'd be surprised. I would say it's close to 1%. Uh, maybe 2%, so 30, 30 listings pulled that just won't sell. And that might that might be about right. That might be what we do. So, I hope you know, because we've been doing this a while, you don't buy stuff that doesn't sell. Although sometimes you buy stuff that is selling and it turns out not to be selling. At any rate, I'm rambling on today, so let me get a little focus. I was talking about ROI before, and ROI, but for what we do, is probably between 40 and 60% profit. So if I say $200 in sales, you know, that's roughly $100 in profit, um, give or take. Sometimes it's more, but that's pretty much what, what we're looking at if you figure 50% um, profit. And a lot of times it is more, but sometimes it's less, so it just depends. I'd like to get an idea out there if some of you are willing to volunteer that information, you know, about what percentage of your sales is profit. If you're doing retail arbitrage, your profits are going to be, your margins are going to be a little bit lower. I like the higher margins. I still do retail arbitrage. Matter of fact, I bought a bunch of costumes from Walmart today. They 75% off for costumes at Walmart's not good, and then you got to store them till next year. But they had one sale. It was $22 Fortnite costumes, adult costumes, that were I think three bucks, and I bought a bunch of the bigger sizes. And they'll sell for 15 to 20. And I don't think you have to wait till Halloween next year. I think some of them will sell now and you know it's a very small investment we're going to our return on investment is going to be like 65 percent i think actually a little bit higher than that 75 percent probably so i'm okay with that kind of roi on retail arbitrage so anyway let's tell you what's sold today and at the end of this video we'll let you take a look at our day let you take a look at the sheds we're looking at and what we're eventually purchasing and it's going to be a process. And to be honest with you, I went a little bit out of my price range for a couple reasons. I don't know. I jokingly said that we're going to have to sell sponsorship <laughs> inside of that thing. And then we're going to have to figure out some colors because I'm not stepping on Lonnie's toes. Let's take a peek at what's sold today. All right. The first thing that's sold is this coffee mug. And it's Death Wish Coffee. And this one, I think it's 2017, made in the USA. 2692 out of 5,000. And I showed this on a video the other day, and I bought this off of a, a friend of mine. And this cup is a pretty valuable little coffee cup. You'd be surprised. They're limited edition, they're handmade. This one is a higher number. It sold for 50 bucks plus shipping. I paid a hundred dollars for one, two, three, four, and a creamer. And I can't find the creamer right now. And this one sold for 50 so I'm hoping to turn that 100 into 200 and to do it fairly quickly. And we'll see. So we'll keep track of this. Maybe I'll keep a little list of, uh, of how much we make on that $100 buy. I wouldn't typically spend that much money on these, but it, like I said, it was a friend of mine. So we're, we're going to make some money, and we gave them some money right off the bat. So I'm happy with that sale for the first one going out, 50 bucks. All right, so working our way from $100, $41 is our profit from, from zero right there. So we're going to total this up. And once we get to 100 we know we've broken even. And if we get past that, obviously, it's going to be all profit. My guess right now is $100 profit. That's my guess. So we'll see if I'm right and see if we can get there. All right, we have a Fleet Enemy going out. We have two sales to viewers today, and both are the Fleet Enemy. What am I going to do when I run out of these things? It's like our uh, mascot. Maybe I could get somebody to make a generic one for me. If anybody knows anybody out there that could do that, I don't know. Get some generic ones and sell them. Who knows? Take off the trademark. See, look at that. Enemy. Trademarked. 
and fleet definitely is so anyway this sold for ten dollars to a viewer and remember if you're out there and you're a viewer and you want one of these we'll give you a discount 1281 i think is what we sell them for usually and if you send me a message i'll send you an offer back for 10 bucks and this one is going out to chris and chris says oh what does he say no i take it back let me get this right yes chris says Thanks for the $10 offer on this guy. He will be my new eBay seller mascot. I'm a new subscriber and really enjoy the content. I think the homeschool hustlers are so cute. Um, I've been selling recreationally on eBay since 1998. It's a long time, but just started this year transitioning to full time. So at any rate, thank you, Chris. We really, really appreciate it. And um, we'll get this one shipped out to you ASAP. All right, she's getting a little unruly. So she got a haircut the other day, didn't you? Sophie got a haircut the other day. Say hi to Strider out there. Say hi. All right, so I'm going to get her a treat, and I'm going to let her go upstairs. All right, so this is, you know, this is what I would call a Commonwealth picker sale. This is why my uncle thinks I'm nuts, and it's kind of hard to see this because the lights, but uh, it is a Apple iPhone box, and it is for a iPhone 6 iPhone 6 Space Gray 65 gigabyte empty box and Sophie managed to get back down here <laughs> So this is Something that I picked up for free out of a free box and it sold for 788 So, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think it's a uh, huge money maker But to be able to make like f almost four dollars on this thing I think that's about right almost four bucks on this box. Maybe even four bucks I'm pretty pretty happy with that so don't pass up things obviously if you saw an iphone box you'd probably pick it up to see if there's an iphone in it but if they're going to give it to you for 50 cents or a quarter and you can make four bucks on it hey go for it all right and this was from the other viewer this is from mark and mark was kind enough to say hey you know i could get this for 10 bucks but why don't uh, why don't i buy full price 1281 and you can give an extra buck to the homeschool hustlers and I thought okay that sounds great and then I thought you know I told Reagan I said but listen this thing's out of the Commonwealth picker store this isn't out of the homeschool hustler store and they only get money out of the homeschool hustler store so Reagan told she looked at me like I was crazy and she said you should probably do what he says and I said I, I suppose you're right so even though it's not out of the homeschool hustler store we're going to give them each a buck and we'll let them decide what they want to do with it so Mark thank you and this is coming your way all right, that old camera equipment. Uh, this is Tundra single tank uh, for 35 millimeter reels or for one 120 reel. And it sold for $14.95, which I think is interesting because if you look, I don't know, it's hard to see with the cameras, but if you look right here, the original sticker is $14.95. And that's what it sold for, plus shipping. And we're going to make a decent amount of money on this. We're going to make, let's see, we'll make about $8 probably. We paid a dollar for it. And oh, what am I talking about? We paid a dollar, so fees for, we're going to make about $11 profit on this guy right here, maybe 12. All right, this is part of a massive free lot of hats that I got. I literally filled a black trash bag full of hats at a yard sale. I said, how much on this hat? He, he said, you could have it for free. If you take everything else, <laughs> okay, I guess I'll take everything else. And I dug through those hats and I found two or three really good ones. And then I found a bunch like this that were okay. And then the rest of them just got donated. Some of them were in such bad shape they got taken to the dump. So this one was is a Wolverines. It's obviously vintage. It's actually in pretty good shape other than the shape of it. So it's not too dirty. Uh, the inside is fairly clean. So it's not a bad little hat. This is... Uh, made in Bangladesh, 1984. So uh, I was hoping maybe, you know, made in the USA on some of these, and some of them were. But this one, I guess, what did they have? A, a win against uh, Notre Dame a couple weeks ago, I think, something like that. Anyway, this sold for 12.41, so it's not a huge money maker. But just to give you an idea on this, we'll probably make about seven, seven dollars profit on this when it's all said and done. All right, so this is what I mean by don't, don't go, you know and get into an arm wrestling match with somebody over a video game. Now, that's not to say there's not huge money in video games, because there is, but it is highly competitive, it, and the sell-through rate is great, so that's awesome, 
But if, if you're not the kind of person to be competitive and to go out there and try to make the best deal for yourself and negotiate and be the first one there, uh, like, hey, that reminds me, Matt, at part-time pickers, you know, be the first one there. If you're not that kind of person, and a lot of us aren't that kind of person, I, I could do that. I have no problem doing that. But for me, I'd rather just not be chasing after that one particular item. I'd rather have my eyes wide open to find a bunch of stuff. So you can find video games like this, no problem, and make some money on them. And some of them make a ton of money. But that hat right there just made $7. And nobody's looking to buy that hat. And it's a little long tail. I get it. But those things are everywhere. And they are a little harder to sell than they used to be. But guess what? So are these. And this is a Nintendo GameCube. It's Darkened Sky. It it only sold for fourteen forty one, but it has no pamphlet on the inside. So just to give you an idea, I paid a dollar. So we're looking at two dollars ish in fees. So there's three dollars. It's you know the other three six. It's roughly the same profit as that hat. Maybe just a little bit more, fifty cents more, a dollar more as that hat. And there's fifty people out there looking for this, and only one looking for that hat. It's just something to think about as you're out there and tracking down those items that you can sell. So, anyway, hang around for the rest of this video. There was one more sale. Actually, I want to show you two things real quick. The first thing is I finally got, uh, I couldn't find um, the winner. It's Teresa, uh, the address for the winner. And we're a day or so behind here, so you're going to see this show up on your doorstep not long after you see this video, maybe a day or two after that. And so we've got the Enemann in there. We've got the Magnet in there. We've got Reagan's little thank you note in there. We've got Commonwealth, Commonwealth, <laughs> Commonwealth Picker card. And we got the Cincinnati Picker cup mug. And then I'll throw in one of these, which I don't have many of these left, but uh, maybe I'll get some made. Who knows? We're going to put this in a little package and we're going to send this out to Teresa, who's been here a long time watching us and supporting us. So we really appreciate you and we'll get that shipped out to you today. By the way, somebody asked me about Pirate Ship. I do use Pirate Ship. I use it often. Um, not terribly often, but I use it. And I used it for this right here. And the other item that sold is something that Blue Ridge Mama sold on Mercari, and I don't have a picture of it. Maybe we'll throw it in, or maybe she'll talk about it. But she's kind of preoccupied taking care of Turner, I'm sure, tonight. And she's bringing Reagan home right now from gymnastics. So we're going to just tell you what sold and maybe show it to you in a different video. And the other item that sold is something that Blue Ridge Mama sold on Mercari, and I don't have a picture of it. Maybe we'll throw it in, or maybe she'll talk about it. But she's kind of preoccupied taking care of Turner, I'm sure, tonight. And she's bringing Reagan home right now from gymnastics. So we're going to just tell you what sold and maybe show it to you in a different video. And they were Fabletic Leggings is what sold. So she bought those and she listed them on Mercari and on eBay. And she listed them on Mercari for a dollar less, I think, than eBay. And she got the sale on Mercari. So that's something that doesn't happen often with us, but we're happy to sell something. Doesn't matter where we're selling it. I'd prefer to sell everything in one place, but I don't think that's where we're at right now. So we're going to try a few different places and continue to learn a little bit and adjust I think it's the best strategy going forward, and thank y'all for joining us. We'll see you next time. All right, so we're down here, and Blue Ridge Mom's got a sale. What are these things? Um, Fabletics leggings, athletic leggings. They're really nice workout leggings. Um, I think there's a site that people join that's like a subscription site, and you get like two, you know, per month or whatever. I actually bought two pair from Goodwill to see size wise because these didn't have a size this particular one the other one that i bought with it was a small though and these measure the same and they don't fit me yet but how much you i'm working for? 20 bucks 20 bucks what did you pay for yeah i think what is it three three nine three ninety nine so yeah. what, we'll make about eight with the shipping yeah even with the shipping though the macari had me making 12. okay yeah nice all right thank you you're welcome all right, so this is not the one that I need because it's not big enough, but these two sure like it. Three. These three sure like it. I don't know. A front porch doesn't exactly increase the bottom line, y'all. But it is kind of cool. <laughs> and it's blue. You know, a little Commonwealth picker blue. And we can't do green because Lonnie is uh, the man. And we can't, uh, can't be uh, copying Lonnie. Although we are copying Lonnie, but buying a shed. But we're not going to call it a shed. Just out of respect. You like that? 
Look at this right up here. You got that loft up there. But how much space do you lose to get a porch just to make my kids happy? I don't um, know. It's pretty cool. It could be your bed. It could be your bed? Yeah. Okay, so this, what are you doing? <laughs> this one's got a lot more space. It's 12 by 24. Doesn't have front porch. Reagan thinks she can make a little uh, yeah, porch up there. Yeah, I'll up here. Front porches, they love front porches. This one is gonna get them. I don't sleep on that. Well, this one doesn't have that coating that helps the insulation. Daddy. It's got that little tiny thing up there, right? Y'all, I need this one. This it's one. bigger. <laughs> Make more money out of this one. Y'all, you're not gonna be in here. I'm gonna be in here. Goodbye. Y'all <laughs> just like it because it's blue and it's got a porch. She just buys this and we'll live out here, and then you can have the whole house. All right, right. that sounds yeah. good. Right. <laughs> right there. Here, I'll just jump. No, I can't. I'm gonna turn around and come down another way. All right, so this is it. This is what we're gonna do. But I made a little compromise here with my family because for some reason they think we need a porch for this thing. So we're gonna get this one, but we're gonna get it four feet longer than this one. So we're gonna go a little bit out of my price range for sure. So I'm gonna have to sell sponsorships to the inside of this thing or something, <laughs> just because I can't afford it.